Hello there. This video will demonstrate how to calculate economic order quantity. The questions covered in this video relate to problems 12.5, 12.7, and 12.15 in your text. Let's start with problem 12.5. In this problem, William Belfield's Computer Training School stocks workbooks with the following characteristics. Annual demand, or Big D, is 19,500 units per year. The ordering cost, also known as S, is equal to $25 per order, and the holding cost, H, is $4 per unit per year. We have three requirements for this problem. The first is to calculate the economic order quantity, or EOQ. The second, to determine the annual holding costs for the workbooks. And third, the annual ordering costs. For requirement A, the formula for EOQ is equal to the square root of two times the demand times the ordering cost divided by the holding cost. So that's going to be equal to the square root, and in the numerator of our fraction, we'll have 2 times 19,500 times 25 divided by 4. That's equal to 493.71, or rounded to 494 units, because you can't order a partial unit. For requirement B, the annual holding cost, that's equal to Q over 2 times H, where Q over 2 is the average inventory, and we're going to use the economic order quantity as our optimal quantity in this formula. So that's 494 divided by 2 times $4 holding cost. That's $988. For requirement C, to calculate the annual ordering cost, that's equal to D over Q times S. So our demand is 19,500. We divide that by 494 units, and we multiply that by the $25 order cost, and that works out to $987. This 987 is not exactly the same as the 988 because we're using a rounded 494. If we use the exact 493.71 to significant digits, then we would end up with the ordering cost equal to the holding cost. If we were to draw this graphically, for economic order quantity, on the x-axis we have units and the y-axis will have dollar cost. The holding cost is a straight line that starts from the origin and is upward sloping, whereas the ordering cost is a downward sloping curve. The holding cost is upward sloping and linear because every unit incurs the same incremental cost. The ordering cost is a downward sloping curve because the larger the order size, the smaller the ordering cost per unit. So the holding cost is represented by the blue line and the order cost represented by the purple line. Where the two cross is where the economic order quantity is at 494 units. And that relates to a cost of about $988. The red curve, as you can see, is the total cost curve. And that's simply the sum of the holding cost and the ordering cost. You can see that if we take the ordering cost and the holding cost, each being about $988, that results in a total cost of $1,976. And the low point of the red total cost curve is also where the holding cost and the order cost intersect. And now we'll look at problem 12.7. Here we have a law office that has traditionally ordered ink refills 60 units at a time, and the firm estimates that carrying cost is 40% of the $10 unit cost and that the annual demand is about 240 units per year. We're also assuming that the basic EOQ assumptions apply. The first requirement is to determine for what value of ordering cost would its action be optimal, i.e. ordering 60 units at a time. And then B, if the true ordering cost turns out to be greater than our answer in part A, what's the impact on the firm's ordering policy? For part A, what we want to do is adapt the economic order quantity model. We know that EOQ is equal to 2 times ds over h, and we take the square root of that. But this time, we know that the EOQ is 60, because that's the number of ink refills ordered at a time. That would be the economic order quantity. So in this case, we have 60 equal to the square root of 2 times 240 times the order cost, s. And we divide that by the holding cost, which is $10 times 40%. If we reduce that a little bit, 60 is equal to 480s over 4. We'd have to take the square root of that. So to get rid of the square root, we'll square both sides of the equation. So 60 squared is equal to 480s over 4. So we'll cross multiply. We know that 60 squared is 3600 times 4. We'll make that equal to 480s. That 3600 times 4 is 14,400 equals 480s. And therefore, the holding cost s is equal to 14,400 divided by 480. And that's $30. So in the answer for part B, if the ordering cost is greater than $30, then under the current policy, the order size is too small. And the reason it's too small is we want to be able to spread that ordering cost over a large number of units. 
So if the ordering cost is larger than the $30 that's used in the EOQ model, the order size of 60 units is just simply too small. And therefore we would not be minimizing the total cost to order and holding inventory. In this case, the ordering cost would exceed the holding cost. Now we'll look at problem 12.15. Here we have a company that supplies microcomputer circuitry to a company that incorporates microprocessors into home appliances. One of the components has annual demand of 250 units and it's constant throughout the year. The carrying cost is estimated to be $1 per year and the order cost is $20 per order. We have four requirements here. The first is to minimize the cost and determine how many units should be ordered each time an order is placed. Requirement B is to determine how many orders per year are needed with the optimal policy. The third requirement, C, is to determine the average inventory if costs are minimized. And the last requirement is for an optimal order quantity of 150 units, what would the ordering cost have to be? For requirement A, we'll calculate EOQ using our standard formula, the square root of 2ds over h. So that's equal to the square root of 2 times 250 times 20 over 1. That's 100 units. B, the number of orders per year, is simply equal to the annual demand, D, divided by the economic order quantity, Q. That's equal to 250 divided by 100, or 2.5 orders per year. Now, of course, you can't have 2.5 orders per year, so you would stagger the ordering and say have 3 orders in 2021 and 2 orders in 2022. For requirement C, to determine the average inventory, that's simply Q over 2, so 100 over 2 is 50 units. And for requirement D, Assuming an economic order quantity of 150 units, we need to determine what the ordering cost would have to be. So we're going to have to adapt our EOQ model to isolate S. So knowing that EOQ or Q is equal to 2ds over H, we take the square root. Right away we want to get rid of that square root, so we'll square both sides to give us Q squared to be equal to 2ds over H. If we multiply both sides by H to get rid of the fraction, Q squared times H is equal to 2ds. And now we can isolate S to be equal to Q squared times H over 2D. That's 150 squared times 1 divided by 2 times 250. So that's 22,500 divided by 500 to give us $45 ordering cost. And now we're done all of our questions. I hope you found this video useful.